I'm Dan Johnson talking to William Wynn, who is the man behind the Corvairs in America. We all, I think almost everybody knows that car engine and your name, and they may not know enough details, so we're going to fix that right now. Welcome, and tell me a little bit about the history of your doing this engine first, and then we'll get into some engine detail. Okay. Uh, Dan, the, uh, I've been doing Corvairs for 29 years. 29. So uh, You don't look that old. So. I, I feel that old in the morning. <laughs> uh, I've been doing this for 29 years, but Corvairs have been around a lot longer than that. Uh, the first uh, year of production of Corvairs was 1960, and Bernard Petenpole flew one in 1960 in the spring. Is so that right? Wow. Corvairs have now been around more than half the length of powered flight. So it's a slow evolutionary process of uh, long-term long uh, commitment and development. So uh, now that I've been here for 29 years, uh, I think I'll make a career out of it. But the Corvair product, the automobile product, has not been on the market for many, many years. So what's, what's your source of the base engine that you then do things to? Well, General Motors made 1.8 million Corvairs. Oh, wow. And uh, if you take a look at that, the uh, uh, motor's 28 inches wide, a little more than two feet. And if you put 1.8 million engines valve cover to valve cover, it's a line 761 miles long. Well, that's a lot of engines out so there. If so we're just, if we're just down to the last 10 miles or so, I think we're okay. You're still okay. So yeah. you, you're not having any trouble finding no. the source materials that you no, need. Is that not right? At all. Okay, great. All right, so now go in, let's go into a little bit of detail about it because people are going to look at this engine and uh, you're in the home built market with this yeah. engine. Yes. Uh, and home builders have a wide variety of airplane choices. So tell me about the engine product that you've got and how a home builder might want to react to that. We have a lot of uh, uh, installations that we do that we have uh, pioneered and done pretty darn well and make all the components for motor mounts, exhaust, cowlings, all of that stuff. The primary uh, market that we cover is Zeniths. So uh, all models of Zenith uh, 600 series aircraft and also the 701, 750 and the Cruiser. Uh, we have installations for all of those. Oh, you do? Okay. And now, when you say installations, are you talking the fire, firewall forward part where you do all the bits and pieces they need? Yes. Okay. That, that's a big deal. It's not just an engine. you got to mount it somewhere. you got to have cowlings and all yeah. that. And you help them with most of those things? Yeah. It, it all started uh, with uh, Zenith. We started in 2003 right here at Oshkosh, uh, where we came here and we 15 bought... 15 years ago then you've been doing this with them, okay. Uh, uh, bought, we came into the booth and Sebastian said, if you think our, if you think our airframes are so good, uh, you know, buy one. And uh, we did. And <laughs> you we, did, okay. We took it home and uh, had it flying in 2004. And that was the first Corvair-powered Zenith. And since then we've had more than 200 people finish we fly oh, is one. Is that right? Oh, not, not the... Uh, not the uh, Biggest uh, engine on the market, Zenith is a pretty big uh, cookie, uh, but we have a pretty good market share. And uh, so tell me some parameters of the engine now. Let's go into the engine itself, the nitty gritty of it. I see it's a six cylinder, of course, but go, go beyond that for me. The, the idea behind the engine is uh, there are a lot of high tech solution engines, uh, but what uh, uh, I've been in A&P, uh, educated at Embry Riddle uh, for more than a quarter of a century, and uh, uh, we were sort of schooled at the temple of uh, Lycoming and Continental. That's and that's, well, that that's, dominates, still does, and, dominate and, uh, the aviation world in America. Uh, so that's a fair comparison. For, for, for good reasons. And uh, my whole approach was I was going to find an affordable methodology of uh, applying everything that Lycoming and Continental did correct to become the dominant engine in light airplanes. I was going to do that and emulate that, uh, quite frankly. Uh, with uh, Corvair engines. And a Corvair is the best uh, solution to apply when you're looking for a low-tech uh, engine that would uh, allow you to use all the lessons of Lycoming and Continental. Most people think, uh, they look at it and say, okay, it's direct drive, horizontally opposed, and air-cooled. So that's what's like Lycoming right. and Continental. Yes. I mean, but, from some perspective, you couldn't hardly tell the difference on this. But really, the, the things that are emulated about Lycoming and Continental are uh, Quality control, testing, manuals, training, uh, you know. Uh, those companies do very well at those tasks, yeah. I know. Yeah, and uh, as an A&P mechanic, uh, I understood that's a very, very big part of the Lycoming and Continental success story. Sure. So when it came down to uh, running our own program, I started off with the manuals, training, 
uh, standards, uh, quality control on parts, uh, and uh, so that, that's the part. The uh, emulating Lycoming Continental is much more than skin deep. I'm sure it is, yes. So. And, uh, they have one huge advantage you don't have. They're big companies with lots of money to spend on these tasks. Uh, how are you able to keep up with them in some of those functions? Well, uh, we've been doing this a long time. So, uh, uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, what I do in aviation. So I've had a long, long uh, period of time to evolve and develop this. But one of the things that is true about a smaller company like ours is uh, this is going on a home build. And uh, if you go over to uh, some of the big names, like Lycoming and Continental, and you meet with them, and you tell them what home built you're building, they really don't know that stuff very well. Yes, that's and, a big difference there. They're very it, good at what they do, not taking you know, anything away from them. But how can they know all these different models and, unless you're immersed and, in it? And if I go to a, a setting like Oshkosh or the Zenith Open House, uh -huh. and a builder comes up to me and says, you know what you really ought to do? You ought to make this one part and that would make this a lot easier. He just spoke to the CEO <laughs> and, and the bean counters and everybody, and I can drive home and design that by the time I get home and rough in a prototype by the next day, versus the, the uh, rapid response of uh, uh, large companies. We can serve home builders uh, very, very closely. And by running the Corbair Colleges and coming to events like this and directly working with home builders, uh, you can fine tune what you do from the way that you present stuff on the website uh, to DVDs on assemblies and manuals, uh, you can refine that. Uh, and a lot of uh, larger structured organizations uh, don't have a feedback loop that, that uh, responds like that. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, your connection, your closeness to the community of people you serve is arguably, besides the engine work itself, is one of your strong characteristics, I, I presume. I, I am home builder through and through. There you go. So, so you've done it yourself. You yeah. know what those folks are up against, and yeah. you know how to help them. Yeah, home building is my home base in aviation. I love a lot of things about aviation, but uh, I am, uh, you know, uh, an absolute, uh, uh, you know, Paul Pabaresny, learn, build, and fly, uh, pure home builder, and uh, that, that is, uh, you know, my model of uh, understanding aviation. Love all of it, but uh, this is the part that I know and love real well, and I like sharing that with people. Well, I can tell that in your voice and your demeanor that uh, this is a very fascinating way for you to be in this business. Let's go back to the engine. Let's have some numbers and qualities about the engine itself now that people might want to know. One of the things that's really different about the engine is uh, while we do manufacture complete engines and sell them to people, that's not the most frequent way that people have of acquiring a Corvair as their power plant. Is that right? Okay. How do they do that then? Most people get a core motor locally and they uh, disassemble it and they ship off some critical components to us like the cylinder heads and the crankshaft and then they buy other parts out of our catalog. It's sort of a pay-as-you-go arrangement and uh, it's a learning process. So the main thing that uh, we have that's different is the engine comes in four different displacements, four different horsepower ratings, uh, and, uh, and you can acquire it either, or every way from buying a manual and getting a core motor and uh, uh, a going, kit engine, if well, you will. Well, in between, we have a kit engine where you can oh, order you have that too, okay. and have every piece in the box, every every uh, part in the box. Uh, we adapt the program to. Uh, them rather than them adapting to the program. I see a theme here about yes. you being a responsive to the customer yeah. and that seems and, like a very valuable that, that's thing. That's what really serves people. Uh, so uh, when in the uh, we attract a lot of people because they like a low-tech engine or they like something that's been around for a while or the pricing on it's pretty good but the real people that get the most out of this are people whose goal was to learn something. Ah, okay. So uh, if you uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, options if you want to buy something, and uh, that's what uh, probably the majority of people are looking for these days.